Hello. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to go on with the World Breeding Federation seminar this year on international breeding values. And I'm really thrilled to see so many of you here uh, to join us for this year's seminar. And just shout or wink at me if you can't hear what I'm saying. I might wander away from the microphone. Uh, I hope that so many of you are here that it's a sign of positive um, interest and curiosity in today's subject. Um, some people are having a private conversation up there. Could you do that outside or...? <laughs> Okay, so my name is Emma Thurian Hersten. I'm the breeding manager of the Swedish Warm Blood Association, and I'm also chairing the SIGA committee, which is short for Collaborative Implementation of Genomic Application in Sport Horses. So, in brief, SIGA. And the SIGA group is, uh, have organized this seminar and the workshop tomorrow. So, the background to this seminar is that in spring 2019, the World Breeding Federation Board decided to investigate the possibilities of international genetic evaluations based on competition results, preferably in cooperation with the FBI, who holds the database for all international competition results. Stallion breeding values estimated using an extended database, which include the FAI data, would definitely benefit the breeders and uh, the World Breeding Federation member stud books worldwide. Already in the late 1990s, a serious attempt for international collaboration about genetic evaluation of sport horses were made. Back then, the task was given to a working group which was established by the World Breeding Federation together with the EAAP and the International Association for Animal Recording. The working group was eventually named Interstallion, that you may have heard about. And the project, project was uh, partly successful, laying out the prerequisites and conditions for international genetic evaluation of sport horses. However, consensus in how to proceed to such a joint evaluation was never achieved, so engagement in the project was terminated from the side of the World Breeding Federation. Today, the landscape has changed for sport horse breeding. The breeding itself has got more and more international over the years, and that trend is likely to continue. What is changing too is that breeders um, do not consider themselves to be breeders of a particular breed, at least not a lot of breeders. They are okay with changing stud book on a regular basis, depending on where they get the best service or the best status for their project. This, in combination with the fact that many stallions are used in many stud books, causes that information on horses and their offspring are spread over several stud books which make it difficult to get a complete overview of the inheritance of stallions. At the same time, everybody wants more information. All stud books are working really hard to be able to serve their members with more and more accurate information. Now, data availability may have changed in a favorable direction when it comes to the top horses, the horses competing on an international level. The FEI result database is online and updated with breeding information on a regular basis, thanks to cooperation between the World Breeding Federation and the FEI. Also, many stud books have established cooperations with the national equestrian federations. All those factors together makes it really interesting for the World Breeding Federation to again investigate the possibilities of international genetic evaluation of sport horses. To be able to support the breeders with the tools and information they want and require, and in order to produce better horses, stud books will have to cooperate. If not, we will probably soon this niche of a market taken over by private companies. But wouldn't it be a shame to miss out on the opportunity to be able to offer the breeders our, the information they really want and need? So let's look into our possibilities. So to help us to investigate our possibilities, we have invited renowned experts on the subject of international genetic evaluation from both the cattle side, where international genetic evaluation has been successful for decades, 
and the whole side where the interstellar project have given insights in the challenges and opportunities of international genetic evaluation. Ooh. I hope that's not a bad sign. <laughs> Our, invest, our invited experts uh, will give us historical background, basic knowledge about breeding values and their use, as well as insights into the procedures and steps to be taken should we decide to, to go on in the direction of international genetic evaluation. And you can read more about our speakers on the World Breeding Federation website. And I would ask you that during and directly after each speech, you may of course ask questions of clarifying character, but I would like you to ask more complicated or complex questions uh, and to wait with them to the panel discussion that we will have after all the speeches. Our program is quite intense today, but we will have a coffee break uh, after the third speech and then we will continue um, at four o'clock sharp. Oh, sorry. There you are. Um, it's important that we stick to our schedule today to be ready, ready to leave here at 5.30 in order to get in time to the wine tasting and dinner tonight. <laughs> first things first, right? So I will just take the opportunity also to inform you about the groupings tomorrow. We will have a workshop tomorrow and um, there will be a possibility for you to sign up for the groups already this afternoon. There will be sheets of paper in the coffee uh, tent later on. And um, it's explained here how we want you to split up in groups. And it's important that you find the group that best fits the situation in your start books in order to have a good workshop where everyone can get answers to their questions and to get on with the project. And if you feel insecure uh, about in what group you should be, you can always ask us, me or Karina or any of the speakers, in what group you should be. And it will also be a, change, a chance to sign up for the groups tomorrow. So if you're insecure, just wait to sign up until tomorrow. But it's not like you, if you are several members from a stud book here, it's not like you should have one in each stud book. You should all be on the level where your stud book is at for the moment regarding genetic evaluation. <coughs> okay, now I've been long enough. So I will introduce our first speakers today because there are actually two of them. It's Katrin Friedrich Stock from the German Computation Center VIT. And it's Osa Wiklund from the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences and both are responsible for the national genetic evaluations in their respect, respective countries, and both have experiences from international projects within this field. Catherine and Osa is going to explain for us the benefits of breeding values and international breeding values in particular. Please. So. Thank you very much for the invitation to be part of this very interesting and very important seminar. And um, we're looking, really looking forward for the next two days, the discussions. And uh, international collaboration is the key word of today. And uh, we have started out, Catherine and I, by making this joint presentation across countries. And um, we will have this introduction and we will go very basic from breeding by eye to breeding used by breeding values and then we go, Kat will come and tell more about from breeding values to international breeding values. But we start from the early, early beginning by asking what is breeding? So some of you may, some of people think that it can be like producing more horses. Well, that is not that relevant in horses. There's a quantitative aspect. For sport horses, it's qualitative aspects. How to improve a breed in a certain direction. And uh, for this picture, it's making more green horses. But in sport horses, we want horses that perform more at a high level. And to do that, we have to select the best horses for breeding. Well, what's the best horse? From a breeder's point of view, of course, we have the breeding goal. Um, high performance often is the expression of the breeding goal, but we want the genetic quality. 
So the breeder wants to have a mare stallion that produces sport horses that are able to perform at high level. So the challenge for the stud books and also for the breeders is to find, select these best horses to become parents for the next generation. Or rather, to find the horses that produce the best offspring, because that is not always the same horse. So when we look at performance at high level, it's a very complex trait. Um, it's influenced by many factors such as management, feeding, rider, age, and of course inheritance. And that's why we're here today, because it's inherited. And I can assure you that this horse will not be, wouldn't have been this successful in my stable. So yeah, it's not only genetics. So how do we choose the best horses? It can seem seem more easy in racing. You have a horse that f f crosses the finish line first and that is the best horse. So if you look at this picture you can say okay which horse do you bet money on or which <coughs> horse do you select for breeding. I should choose the one with the four on the back because he's the first one. But the more you know about the horses you have to have more data. So if you add data then you realize that the number two horse is younger than the f first one. And number four is a mare and the other one is a stallion. And number four is trained by an amateur, but number two is trained by a top professional. And number two was a really good pedigree with the relatives that have succeeded very good. And as you see, it's not that easy to answer these questions. Then different answers will be, uh, come from the betters and the breeders but I will still bet for the horse that win the race, that is in front. Um, but how do we approach these complex traits? Well, first you have to define your target as precisely as possible. What kind of horse do you want to breed? What traits do you want to improve? Is it uh, gates? Is it uh, show jumping? Is it confirmation? Second, are the traits you want to improve inheritable? Is it genes are is are responsible for the difference you've seen between horses? And if it is heritable, to what to check extent it is heritable? Third, go out and collect data uh, for the uh, target traits that you have defined earlier. And then ha try to separate the genetic effects from the non-genetic effects. Which data can you use? What data can you use in, uh, for measure horses in different ages? And which tool can you use? Is it enough to look at the horse itself? A group of progeny? Well, not likely. Maybe you have to use breeding values. If you're going back to the race horses, here we can see uh, the races, the two horses in the front. Well, and we have a separate effect by the genetic effect and the non-genetic effect, as we saw for the trotters. So, and the genetic effect and the non-genetic effect can move in the same, dire same direction, but it also can move in opposite directions. And here it's clear to me anyway that we, this is the horse we should put in breeding, with the highest breeding value. So, we said that we wanted traits that were inheritable, and we have a measure about that, that uh, to explain that it is heritability. And it um, describes the relative, relative importance of genes for a trait. And the defi definition is that it, how a large proportion of the total variation that is based on genetics. So if you look at this first box here, you can see 20% of the total variation is um, genetic. So that's the heritability of 20%. But this measure is specific for one population, but also it depends on the data quality. So if you only go to collect data without thinking too much, you can induce more uh, non-genetic variation if you do the testing differently one time for another, or if you don't educate your judges maybe. Then we have a lower heritability, but still the same genetic variation, but we have um, more also of the non-genetic, 
So we have to take control of the data recording. So by, for example, standardized testing, educational judges, and repeated observation, we can also improve the heritability. Well, does the heritability matter when breeding? Well, it, it does, I can say you. Uh, because uh, if you have highly heritability traits, it's a good chance that you can achieve progress only breeding by eye. And such traits are, for example, morphological traits like with its height. So if the breeding goal is only to make a certain size of your horse, you will probably do without breeding values. But the traits we are interested in, like performance traits and health traits, have low to moderate heritability. Then we need more information and more advanced methods, and we have to meet, breed, um, have breeding values. And Catherine, what do you say about breeding values? Yeah, thank you very much, Elsa, uh, for making the floor uh, for me. Yes, I would like to continue. Uh, breeding values, uh, first of all, brief explanation, what is it? So, so Elsa has already explained, it reflects the genetic quality uh, of the horse. And um, if we talk about the estimation of breeding values, you, you can also say it's a genetic evaluation you do, so uh, m uh, getting an idea of the genetic quality of a horse. And it's actually a way how to, or a way to use uh, optimally uh, the data you have. So it's on the one hand for sure your uh, phenotype, so, so the information on your, about your target trait, performance in our sport horses and uh, linking it with the pedigree data. And in, in this uh, figure you can see uh, for sure uh, from concerning uh, the, the performance traits, uh, it is on the one hand the sport information, but uh, it also plays a role if you have, for example, standardized performance testing. We have already heard from OSA that it uh, is very advantageous if you can standardize uh, your data recording so it may be also beneficial to uh, go into a genetic evaluation with this kind of information. And then uh, you need uh, not only your brain, you need some, some uh, infrastructure for that, uh, processing the data and then uh, doing the estimation, linking the trait information with the pedigree, and then what comes out is actually the breeding value. And this says you something about the genetic quality um, of the horse. So what are breeding values exactly? So first of all they are considering all information on the horse you have but also on all the relatives of the horse. So it's not the single horse you are looking at, so it's not the single horse's quality but it's really making the big picture of it, it brings it into the pedigree and, and links, it, uh, links all the information which is available there. Uh, then, what is also very important, we have heard about the influence of non-genetic effects on the performance we see. So it's already corrected in the breeding values, so it's, it's uh, filtered off what is really genetics and what, is, uh, uh, the, what you can use for the breeding. Um, so it's the, uh, reflecting the quality. Um, and what is also important and uh, very often not really considered by the breeders that it's always relative uh, to the population. So if you have a genetic uh, evaluation in one country and a breeding value, you cannot compare it directly to the breeding value uh, which has been estimated in another uh, population. So if you have a 120 there and a 110 in another population, it is not directly comparable. It's, it's not a 10 point difference. It is um, not possible because it has been different, uh, estimated on different uh, databases. So it's difficult to handle this parallel existence of different breeding values from different sources of data. So when we now ask the, the uh, crucial question, why do we need or why should we use uh, breeding values in horse breeding? So also has explained, uh, we have learned uh, that the performance traits we are dealing with are complex, so influenced by many, many factors. So it's quite obvious that it has severe shortcomings if you look only at the phenotype influenced by all the other uh, noisy things. So the benefit of the breeding value is that it's really all the non-genetic effects are filtered out and it's what's really important for us as breeders, the uh, genetic component, this is what the breeding value is reflecting. So 
it's much more informative for the breeder. Then what also is an advantage of breeding values, um, it uses all pedigree links. You can surely say, well, an experienced breeder knows quite a lot of, of about breeding lines, about the pedigree, <laughs> of, about the history of, of uh, your horse breed. Yeah, well, but I think it's still that computers can uh, yeah, think a bit better, a bit more complex than a human brain. And uh, if you, if you uh, look what comes uh, out of this uh, computer work, it's really that breeding values can separate horses easily, which are, if you look at their performance, are uh, seemingly equal. But uh, regarding their genetic quality, their breeding values, they are different. So you can use breeding values to, to uh, differentiate between uh, horses which look similar on a purely phenotypic level. And breeding values, which is also important, are available for more horses. So actually, uh, for all the, the horses which appear uh, in a pedigree of a horse with performance records, which can enter the genetic evaluation, you also get off a breeding value. So it makes all the horses in the system comparable in their genetic quality. Uh, then, what, what comes out uh, for a stock book, for a breeding program uh, from the genetic evaluation, from the breeding values? The breeding programs can actually benefit quite a lot because um, you can, in a genetic evaluation, you can integrate different information sources. So I've already mentioned when, oops, excuse me. Um, I was actually there. Um, so the breeding programs can benefit a lot because you can use the information uh, about your definite target traits, so let's say uh, performance on highest level in competitions in sport, but you may also link it with the information that we have heard of, uh, which may be quite beneficial from the performance testing you often have in your stop book, and you can, uh, through some uh, statistical analysis, com what is it? Oh. This, uh, oh, there it is, up again, yeah. Whatever it is. Um, you, you can balance it, uh, you can combine this information, and you can say, well, yes, the highest weight should definitely be on the highest performance in sport, in competition, but I can combine it with what I know is quite useful for uh, quantifying ge the genetic quality of a horse. So you can combine this information and your strengths and your breeding programs by that, actually. And last but not least, it's also quite good. Um, you can use breeding values to also track what you have done, how good you have done your job in selecting the horses, in identifying the best horses and use them for breeding. Uh, you can track the genetic progress and um, it's actually, the, horse, uh, the horses become population-wide comparable and you can track the genetic trends of the whole population, so how successful you are in improving your population in what you are aiming at. Is it dressage quality, jumping ability, whatever. So now it comes to the point, okay, when you have said, yeah, well, breeding values seem to make sense, but why international breeding values? You, you have convinced me, okay, breeding values may be okay for horses as well, but why international? So first of all, what are international breeding values? So sometimes people think, well, it is using international data, but this is not really what international breeding values mean, what ge genetic... In, uh, international genetic evaluation means. It means integration, so use of information from more than one country. And surely you can incorporate there the most important information for a sport horse breeder. Uh, so this is actually the information from the international competitions. But what is very, very important, you need to, to use uh, it in a, in a more, in a wider content. So, so embed this information in all the information you have on the horses because it's only very few horses which perform on highest level on an international platform. So you really need more information. And so the challenges we have, so it's not trivial to, to come up with an international genetic evaluation tomorrow, and these challenges are actually directly linked to the general requirements of a genetic evaluation, so of estimating breeding values. So you need to have, for sure, a clear target. If you don't know what to breed for, you cannot 
work towards this target and the same holds true for genetic evolution. So you need to define your uh, trait you want to work with and you need to think about when you collaborate between countries, you want to have an international evaluation. Are the traits you are at the moment using in the different countries, are they really comparable? Or do we need, for example, some harmonization? So is there something to do? Or is it possible that we need a new trait? We need to define a new trait jointly together, agree on a trait we want to use in international genetic evaluation. And we actually don't know. So this is something we have to work at. Then what is also important, we have learned that, um, you need not only lots of data, this is good, this is always strengthening your system, but you need at least the minimum level of data quality. So it's not only quantity, not only the amount of data, but also quality of data. And this implies actually that you have a look at your data. So you should know how good or how bad, hopefully not, your data are, and then only we can use these data for the genetic evaluation. And what is also important, it is not only the information on your performance trait, but it's also important to correct for the non-genetic effects, so you need additional information on that. And you should collect this information as well, otherwise we cannot correct for this noise. And what is extremely important, because this is actually crucial for an international evaluation, we need the pedigree pedigree links and only because we have an international sport horse breeding we can go into an international genetic evaluation and if we have errors in the pedigree we do not have the links because we have duplicates in the IDs of the horses we will not find these links which are existing and so we need to work on the quality uh, of, of the pedigree data. And if you have a feeling that it's, it's uh, yeah, not only theory, but it's also practical work, which has already also been done in, in the horses, I would like to briefly come to, to a collaborative study, which is actually ongoing. Uh, and we have uh, entered it uh, between the Oldenburg stud books and the, the Swedish Womblet stud book, because we started with the linear profiling for confirmation and performance traits. And in an early phase of such new development, it's always good to get a feeling of the data quality, of the genetic evaluations, of, yeah, well, is the direction okay? And we were quite aware of some pedigree links and we thought, well, yeah, let's enter this, uh, this collaboration and uh, try to make these links and use breeding values to, to uh, compare our two systems for the linear traits. First step we had to take was that we look at the overlap. So we need the genetic links and we use stallion breeding values and we could identify it as an, <coughs> at an early stage of the genetic evaluations from the 1,600 uh, stallions which had already breeding values in, in Oldenburg, only 330 in, in Sweden. We already found 132 stallions which were uh, present in both evaluation systems and we could use compare the breeding values between these stallions, which were estimated in, in the two uh, yeah, genetic evaluations. So not directly comparable, but you can co uh, estimate correlations. You, you can, can look how similar uh, the breeding values are, how similar are our estimates of the genetic quality of the stallions. For you as breeders, it's extremely important because if you look at the stallion catalog of Swedish Bomblet and see the same stallion as it's in the Oldenburg catalog, you would like to, to know that the, the, the feedback to you, the opinion of the stallion, goes into the right direction, in the same direction. It's, otherwise, it's international breeding, it's extremely difficult. If, it would not be comparable. And we were lucky, uh, we found very positive results. And, uh, our impression was, yes, um, we are most likely on the, on the right way because it were independent developments when the, the direction was the same. So it's, let's see, say, at least unlikely that we go in, in a very similar wrong way. Um, so let's, let's trust in, in we are on the right way and we can, can go ahead and we can actually positively look into the future with regard to linear traits and use them for further development of genetic evaluations and possibly also genomic evaluations. So coming now to the point, okay, um, some work has been done with the new traits, linear traits, but now international breeding values when it comes to the sport horses, it's more on the sport traits. So 
um, why should we use it there and how can we go there or what do we need to consider? Yeah, when we collaborate and go into an international evaluation, you, you need to keep in mind the input-output relationship. You, if you enter a system with more data, you have the potential to get more out of it. And um, you can increase the reliability of prediction if, if you use more uh, data for estimating the genetic quality of the horses. So international breeding values have the potential to be more reliable thanks to the additional information which enters the system from other countries. And what is uh, then uh, for, for the breeders important, more stallions, more horses in general will fulfill the criteria you have to find for publishing the breeding values. So it's more accessible for the breeders. More uh, stallions become accessible for the breeders. Yeah, then you have to, to uh, keep in mind what has been uh, already mentioned in the introduction, the internationality of sport horse breeding. Um, the breeders are looking around and um, from, with this background, international breeding will, values are actually more or less straightforward because you have shared target traits, highest performance in sport, best performance in sport, and you actually have the pedigree links across stock books, so why not? Using the international breeding values for the breeders, I think it's quite straightforward to use it. Um, and what is important, you know, um, we all in the different countries have challenges regarding the progeny of foreign stallions. So if we go into a genetic evaluation, it's always difficult to use this pre-selected progeny. And if you can use more information, you are, have, have the potential to use more realistic full screen uh, on, the, on the progeny of, of the stallion. So the um, IBV, the international breeding will is likely to be more uh, reflecting what is the real genetic quality of the horse is. And uh, it's actually also that if, ye, if uh, international genetic evaluation uh, yeah, simplifies, facilitates the use of international sport data, FEI data, it actually passes the way to using the performance at, and consider it appropriately the highest performance at highest level in sport. Yeah, and again, stud books and breeders both benefit from improved, further improved transparency because, again, horses, more horses become more comparable and it's now on a global scale. It's not only that, that it's, it's within your individual population the horses are directly comparable, but now it's really on the level the breeders are thinking. So it's global, it's international, and this is actually why the international breeding values can help you to increase the breeding progress in your individual stud book. And uh, it makes also the stud books comparable among each other because it's, it's really now it's, they are comparable because their horses are comparable and this will at, at the end benefit the whole sport horse breeding. So what are actually the prospects I see, what we see actually in the group when we has, have discussed about it? There is great potential of international breeding values for the WBFSH member stud books and definitely for all of them and for the whole sport horse breeding. But what you really need is, is we have, have predefined tasks, we have very, very different starting points. This is why we do or think about this grouping tomorrow. And, but we can all work towards the international breeding values. So we have other things to do, but we can all work towards that. And we have uh, really, we also have uh, challenges when we, when we enter this, this project on international breeding values. And we can only meet these challenges by collaboration across the stud books. We have positive examples, successful examples, how it can work. And I think we can also extend this and collaborate more intensively among the WBFSH member stud books as a whole. Thank you.